Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am going to be sharing five different slow cooker recipes with you all. Four are going to be like savory dinner ideas and one is going to be a sweet dessert because I don't know if you knew this, but you can cook so many different sweet treats in your slow cooker and they just come out perfect every single time. If you're watching this video and you're new to my channel, I would love for you to press that subscribe button down below. I post loads of different foodie content on my channel and every single Sunday morning, morning at 7 a.m. UK time, I post a brand new recipe idea. So if you need some meal inspiration, then I would love for you to stick around. Also over my Instagram, I post loads of different foodie content too. So if you need even more inspiration, then I would love for you to follow me over there too. It's absolutely freezing cold in the UK here now. So it's perfect slow cooker weather. So I really hope these recipes look really delicious to you. They've been tried and tested by my family and they have all gone down an absolute treat. So hopefully they will for your family too. So with all that said, let's get straight on into this video. For this rib recipe, you're going to obviously want some ribs. So these are shortcut ribs and they have the bone still in them. So I've got two packs of that because I know everyone loves this meal and they're going to want loads. I have got some passata, but you can use chopped tomato if you want. One onion, I'll use four cloves of garlic. I've got one veggie stock as well. I'll put the veggie stock in, but without adding any more water as well. I've got some honey, some bay leaves, some soy sauce. And then I have got this roasted garlic paste. It's like a really really intense garlic taste and it almost is like the garlic's been sort of slow cooking for hours and hours and hours so it just adds so much depth to your meal and then I've also got some salt and pepper as well so basically what I'm going to do is put all of my ingredients bar the ribs into my slow cooker and just mix them up so I'll put in my passata I'll put in my diced onion and my garlic as well as my veggie stock cube that I would have like crushed up into my slow cooker. I'll then add in my soy sauce, my two bay leaves and also my garlic paste and I will season this all really well as well. Once all the sauce has been combined I will then put in my ribs and I will make sure they are fully coated with my sauce before putting the lid on and cooking this on low for six to eight hours. I will be serving this with some rice on the side but you can serve this with wedges, you can serve this with whatever you fancy really or just by themselves if you want to do this as like a little starter or something like that but we love it with rice because it is a saucy dish the rice just works really really well with it for this curry it's super super simple and as you can see there's not loads of ingredients as well and I have like pre-prepped in advance because I wanted this to be even quicker so in here I have cut up one pepper into kind of like sort of bits like that. I have cut up five carrots into little chunks like that. And I have also got some ginger and um, just taken the skin off. So I'm going to grate that. And then what else I've got here is some white fish. These are just cod fillets. I buy them frozen. So I've defrosted those overnight. I've got some Thai red curry paste, one coconut milk, some curry powder and some salt and pepper as well. So what I'm just going to do is just add everything into my slow cooker at the same time. So I'll add in my coconut milk, my curry paste and my curry powder and I'll also add in my grated ginger. With that I will then season that well with some salt and pepper and then chuck in my veggies and mix everything together and then I'll get my cod fillets and just lay them onto the top of my mixture underneath. This actually only needs two hours to cook in a slow cooker on low but there's absolutely no harm in cooking it for longer as well. If you want to you could actually make up the sauce, leave the veggies and your cod out until you get home from work and then you can put those in for the last sort of half an hour hour while you're cooking up your rice to make sure they're not too soft so what I'll just do is pop these into my slow cooker for two hours on low and then it's all just ready to serve I'll make up some rice on the side and then just serve my curry over my rice and enjoy <laughs> The ingredients you need for this beef stew is some diced beef. I have got two packs of diced beef because I just think 
a good stew has a lot of meat in it. So I've got two packs of diced beef and I've also got some bacon lardons. And then what I have done already is I've diced up one onion. I've got five sticks of celery and four carrots here. So I've diced them into quite small chunks like this. I've also got some tomato puree, 600 mils of beef stock. And then I don't know if you guys have ever seen these before, but these are literally amazing. So these are red wine stock cubes. So I have got normal beef stock here, but then I'll also be adding one of these stock cubes to my stew as well. It just adds so much flavor and depth to your stew. Um, what I've done here is I have got three tablespoons of flour and then I've just mixed it together with some water to make some paste. And this is just going to help thicken your stew up so it's not going to be watery. To season it, I've got some salt and pepper, some mixed herbs, and I'll be adding in some bay leaves as well. So what I'm gonna start off by doing is I'm going to put all of my carrots, my celery, and my onion into a pan with some butter. And I'm just going to saute those off. Once those have sauteed, I'll add those into my slow cooker. And to the pan, I will then add my diced beef and my lardons, and I'll just brown those off to sear the meat and to seal it. Once that's been sealed, I'll add that into my slow cooker as well. I'll then go ahead and add in two tablespoons of tomato puree, all of my beef stock, one pot of my red wine stock cubes, some salt and pepper, one tablespoon of mixed herbs and two bay leaves. I'll then just stir in my thickening paste to the slow cooker and I'll just give everything a really good mix around. Don't worry if your paste looks like it's not combining well. Once everything heats up, it'll kind of dissolve into your liquid. You then want to put your slow cooker on low for eight to 10 hours and just leave it to cook away. We love serving this with mashed potato, but you can just have it by itself. You can serve this with rice, you can serve it with whatever you like but we think mashed potato goes best with this so the ingredients for this meal that you're going to need is quite a lot of kidney beans so um, I have got two tins of these ones that are, these are just in water normal kidney beans that I will drain and then I've got another two tins of kidney beans but this is in a chili sauce it's not too spicy so don't worry about it and because you're going to combine two of the chili sauce ones with just the normal ones, it kind of makes the flavor even milder. So I've just got two of each of those tins. I've got one tin of chopped tomatoes. I've got some bay leaves. I've got some chorizo and onion. I'll use four cloves of garlic and I've also got some salt and pepper here as well. So this is such a simple meal. All you need to do is dice up your onion and your garlic and your chorizo, and you're just gonna start off by frying those off in a pan. I like to just crispen the chorizo off a little bit so it's got a bit of a bite to it when it's in your dish. Once you have sauteed your onion and garlic and um, fried off your chorizo a bit, you're then just ready to chuck everything into your slow cooker. So I'll put in my onion, garlic, and chorizo mix. I will then put in my two two tins of kidney beans in the chili sauce and I'll put in my two tins of kidney beans that were in the water but they'll be drained off. I will also add in my tin of chopped tomatoes, three or so bay leaves depending on the size of them and also some salt and pepper as well. I forgot to say that I'm also going to be adding in 100 mils of veggie stock as well. Because there's nothing to actually cook in this, you could just put this into your slow cooker for one or two hours on high, but because I just wanna chuck this in in the morning, I'm gonna put mine on for six hours on low. And then what we like to do is we like to serve this with some rice. So half an hour before I'm ready to serve up, I will cook myself some rice and then serve my red bean chili over the top of it when it's ready. <laughs> So the ingredients that you're going to need for this chocolate peanut butter cake is some um, flour. I've got self-raising flour or you can use plain flour, completely up to you as long as you do have some baking powder or bicarbonate soda. So you're going to need some flour, a little bit of salt, some sour cream, some baking powder or bicarb. I've got some brown sugar and I've also here got chunky peanut butter. You can use chunky or smooth, but I think the chunky just gives it a really, really nice texture in the cake. Then you're also going to need some butter, vanilla extract. I've got some golden caster sugar here, but you can just use regular caster sugar. I've got some milk and I've got 200 grams of dark chocolate chips as well. 
So what I'm going to start off by doing is whisking together my flour, brown sugar, my bicarbonate of soda and some salt into a bowl. Then in a separate bowl I'm going to whisk together my peanut butter, my sour cream, my butter and some boiling water in there as well. The mixture will be very very thick and that's how it is meant to be. You then want to stir in your flour mixture until it's fully combined and it's at this point that you want to add your chocolate chips. You just want to generously grease your slow cooker. I do find this step is quite important as sometimes I get bits of the cake kind of stick to the side of the slow cooker and it just makes it a lot easier to remove it from the slow cooker at the end. Once you have greased your slow cooker, you're then ready to pour in your cake mixture and in another separate bowl, you want to whisk together your caster sugar, your cocoa powder. Oh, sorry, I forgot to actually show you I was using cocoa powder as well. So like I said, you want to whisk together your caster sugar, your cocoa powder, your milk and your vanilla extract and then once that's nicely combined, you want to pour that mixture over the cake in your slow cooker. Cover your slow cooker and cook on high for about one and a half to two hours, but just keep checking it after one and a half hours because once your cake mixture starts to come away from the side of your slow cooker, that means it's ready. So you could then turn your slow cooker off and remove your lid and let it cool completely in your slow cooker. And that way I find it's a lot easier to remove. If I try and remove this when it's hot, sometimes it breaks up, but this is honestly one of the most gooey, tastiest, crunchiest cakes you will have because of the nice peanut butter crunchy bits in there. Well worth a try and it's just so easy to make as well. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and I will see you guys again soon with another video just like this. Bye.